I would like to thank, first of all, all the speakers, and also the technical staff uh, of the Academy, and the technical staff who have organized this very nice, nice connection to those who are who are participating remotely, so seeing the face on the screen of those who are participating, participating remotely, it makes them to be almost with us. So, uh, when I was trying to summarize what we have actually learned here, maybe not so much, but still, I think we have updated and uh, made much more detailed some of the existing knowledge, which is always very highly appreciated. I would like to specifically thank plenary speakers uh, for their contribution. They all, in a way, widened our horizons, uh, showing, that, showing that actually no disaster is looming, except those what we can organize ourselves. Uh, so that um, some changes, what many believe to uh, be compl extremely complicated and hazardous, they actually only exist, exist in minds of people. But they are the most dangerous. <clears throat> but there is still a lot of room for improvement, for better input. And for better input, not so much into policy, but for those uh, who have the mandate and obligation to make different decisions. They are called policy makers. And those who are shaping the policy, those who are advising uh, our governments, parliaments, policy makers. It's really good that the number of case studies is increasing, but it's increasing on the um, in the frame of different joint projects. And the scope of those projects is also widening. Um, technically, of course, we know for decades that marine environment is almost never homogeneous. And vice versa, it's actually extremely patchy and highly variable both in space and time. And that uh, very interesting phenomena may take place in the small Gulf of Finland. But what we start to learn, I think within the last de decade we had this turn of minds. We are learning that marine space is also, as such, is also not homogeneous. Um, it doesn't mean uh, uh, not, it doesn't mean only, say, marine protected areas or spawning areas or, um, or specifically vulnerable areas. The entire um, Baltic Sea is highly vulnerable area uh, in terms of international maritime organization. Uh, I think the change is that uh, the sea is becoming more and more our home, our common home. And we uh, we share our home between different functions. We normally don't not, do not sleep in kitchen, and we don't, do not play football in the living room. So we have different areas for different functions. And this is what we do now um, with a C in terms of maritime special planning. And this is a place where our experience, our knowledge, and our ability to foresee the future, at least to some extent, is, is very much needed and would be, of course, very much appreciated. Um, then, from a scientific point of view, this exercise is, is like a variation of a global optimization problem. And in this context, I would like to remind that we have other global optimi optimization problems underway in part uh, of the countries who are participating here. I have in mind here the Green Deal of the European Commission. Not as such, but as I mentioned, as, a, as an example of a global optimization problem. 
So the point of Green Deal is fivefold. There are five targets which must, must be all achieved together and, we, <coughs> and, and no, uh, no drawback in, in any of the goals is accepted. And the goals are basically very simple. First, it's carbon neutral society in terms of emission of um, greenhouse gases. Second, economy must be increasing. Third, nature must be preserved and well kept. Fourth, both health and wealth of people must be increased. So we must live better, must live happy lives without, uh, without infections if possible. And fifth, nobody is left behind. It is extremely complicated to achieve all those targets um, in, in, in one move. So when you have a system of, of uh, different connections, like Marx Meyer was demonstrating to us how complicated the impact chains are, if you move one lever, then some other may move into an adverse direction. And this is not accepted. So it is a global optimization problem to move in all five directions positively all the time. So maritime special planning is pretty much um, uh, a task of similar kind, at least conceptually. Uh, so we have to make best out of this part of our home, not damaging its functioning and helping it to recover from the impact in the past. And at the same time, we have to solve almost um, uh, infinite number of competing and conflicting interests. So it's a nice school of democracy to make such exercises. But one thing which came out on this conference, I think for the first time in the history of Gulf of Finland marine science, is the possible thinking that even the sea may have its own rights. It might be treated as a fellow citizen, not a domesticated pet. And this metaphor of domesticated pet is really important. You have probably all read Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, the small prince. And the fox is telling the small prince, if you domesticate, you take responsibility. You are responsible if you have domesticated somebody. So this is much more than just protecting some areas or, or zoning uh, the sea according to uh, the best use. It's um, about rethinking of the entire attitude, which is called in um, standard ways out-of-the-box thinking. And thinking that the nature has been a very good ally for mankind. So let's act so that it will stay an, an, as an ally and never turn into a, an enemy. With that, I'm happy to once more thank everybody and to say that the conference is technically closed and now the doors into the future will be opened behind me. And you know what is expecting you in the future. So forecasting this future of future is as simple as that. Thank you very much.